So we've been told in this network that the operating system of the router has been lost. Clicking on the router, I can see that the router has booted into ROM monitor mode. Help shows us various commands that we can use in ROM mon mode. One of them is DRR, and we can look at the flash of the router. At the moment, no files are available in flash. So if I use the command reset, the boot process fails, and we back in ROM monitor mode. Help again shows us various commands that are available. One of those is TFTP download, which allows us to download an image from a TFTP server. In this network, we have a TFTP server, which has the operating system. The TFTP server has an IP address of 10.11.100. So again, ipconfig shows us the IP address of the TFTP server. So we should be able to connect to the TFTP server via the switch. That assumes that the ports on the switch are in the same VLAN. So on the switch, show IP interface brief. This port is up. This is the port connected to the TFTP server. This port is down. This is the port connected to the router. You can view that by going to Options, Preferences, Show Port Labels. And that will show you the port labels in the diagram. I'm gonna turn that off. But if you prefer, you can display the port labels. So again, this is the port or interface connected to the router. This is the interface connected to the server. Show run allows us to view the running configuration. We can see that port fast is enabled on this port. That's important because when the router boots up, it's gonna try and connect to the TFTP server and we don't want the router's connection to time out. So we want the port on the switch to start forwarding immediately. So I'll run the TFTP download command. Notice the help that it's gonna give us. There's quite a bit of help. We told that we need to enter some information to use the command. We also told to only use this command for disaster recovery when recovering an image from a TFTP server. That's what I wanna do in this lab. We need to configure some variables using this syntax, and we can use the set command to show the current variables. These variables are required. These are optional. So set at the moment shows us that only that option is currently configured. So what I'm gonna do is copy IP address and paste that into the router and set the IP address of the router to a value such as 10111. I'm setting it to 10111 because the TFTP server has its default gateway configured with that IP address and the switch is configured with this IP address. You don't have to use 10.1.1.1. You just need to make sure that you have IP connectivity. So use an IP address in the same subnet. Subnet mask will be set to 255.255.255.0. And that's because that's the subnet used on the TFTP server. And that's the subnet used on the switch. So you're going to want to configure the router in the same subnet as the TFTP server, or configure a default gateway that has IP connectivity to the TFTP server. But in this example, because the devices are in the same subnet, a default gateway is not required for IP connectivity, but it is required for this command. 
So I'm gonna specify the default gateway as the TFTP server. I'm gonna configure the TFTP server as 10.1.1.100. That again is the IP address of the TFTP server in our network. Important part is which file name are we going to retrieve from the TFTP server? We told to use this file. So I'm gonna copy that. You need to make sure that that is actually the correct file name on the TFTP server. So C2900, Universal K9, MZ or MZ if you prefer, SPA, 1514M4BIN. That looks right. So I'm gonna paste that in. And then I can use the set command to verify what I've done. So those values are now configured. And then we can use the TFTP download command to download the operating system from the TFTP server to the flash of the router. Now notice that the interface on the router is currently down. Say yes, that interface goes green. And because of port fast on the switch, the interface went green as well. And the router was able to connect to the TFTP server and pull down the operating system and put it into flash. So DRR flash now shows us that we have that operating system in flash. Reset will allow us to reboot the router. And notice the difference, it's now loading the operating system. Previously, we went straight into ROM monitor mode or ROM mon, but now the router has successfully booted up. So show flash shows us the file stored in flash. Show IP interface brief shows us that the router has an IP address configured on gigabit 00. That configuration was retrieved from the startup configuration not from the TFTB download set commands that we used. So at this point, notice the router can ping the switch and the TFTB server. If I use the command reload to reload the router, what it should do is again retrieve the operating system prompt flash, load that into memory, load the startup configuration, and apply that to running configuration, which it's done. Notice the IP address has been applied to gigabit zero slash zero, and the router has been restored. So I've now verified that the router boots correctly, and I've made sure that it can ping both the TFTP server and the switch. So I'm happy with the lab at this point. How did you do? Were you able to complete the lab? did you get the operating system restored? It's important that you understand the differences between startup config, running configuration, ROM monitor mode or ROM mon, and the booting of the operating system from Flash.